All right, well, I think that's time, so we'll make a start. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is the talk about Apache Poi at 20 years old. I'm David North, and straight away I've failed to change slides. Uh, so I've been uh, part of the Poi project for a few years. I in my day job, I'm head of engineering at a company called Core Filing, which is based in Oxford in the UK. Um, the local time here is just after 3 p.m. And surprisingly, for England in September, the sun is shining. So couldn't really ask for more than that. So I was a fairly active POI contributor a few years ago. Um, I've largely gone dormant lately. Um, but my background is as a Java developer, I'm more of a manager these days, but I've still got people on my team who are working with Poi every day and find it a really useful thing. Link on the screen there is just my Apache page. I will put the slides up later along with my speaker notes and I understand the video is going to be shared. This over here is my mother's dog that's just going to be keeping an eye on me. So don't be too surprised if you hear the odd woof and wonder where it's coming from. So let's talk about Poi. Um, it may be an urban legend, but I was told in the bar last time we had an Apache Con in person that uh, Poi allegedly once stood for poor office implementation. Uh, but what it does is it's Java API for the Microsoft Office formats. So that includes particularly Word and Excel, but also the various other less known ones, and it includes both the old .doc and .xls formats and the new .docx and .xlsx ones that were introduced in around 2007 and have become pretty much the standard since. So how far back does POI go? Well, the clue was in the title and the first lines of code, the first sort of alphas were worked on in 2000. Um, Whichever, wherever exactly you draw the line on uh, Poi's birthday, it's definitely old enough to have a drink in this country. And I thought I'd celebrate its coming of age by taking on a bit of a tour through the history of the project, what you can do with it, what other people currently do with it, and a little bit of a look at where the future lies. So a little bit of a timeline to help us get our bearings. As I mentioned, the project started properly in the year 2000. The original focus was very much on the .doc and .xls file formats. Um, a lot of work went into those and something stable and useful was achieved fairly rapidly. Around 2008, support was added for the, at the time, new OOXML formats, which is the ones ending in X, so docx, xlsx, and so on. Funny story, Microsoft made a significant contribution to the work on the newer formats, although rumor has it that the regional office of Microsoft, which uh, authorized and funded all that work, wasn't uh, entirely in Redmond's good books for doing so, but that's all just ancient history and speculation. A lot of work got done and the new formats were supported. Uh, in 2017, 3.16 final was released. That's one of the longest lived and most popular releases out there from the 3.x series. And there's been a bit of activity since, of course, always being improved and two major versions in the sort of five years since then. Version 5.0 was released at the beginning of this year. A couple of statistics, um, around 250,000 lines of code, which is small by the standards of some Java projects, but it's plenty to keep on top of. Around 24 PMC members scattered across the world, mostly collaborating by email. Um, five major versions in 21 years is not a lot by the standards of some software, but I view that as a good thing. A lot of Poise users, and I probably, if I'm honest, count my own employer as this, a lot of the users are in the enterprise where things move at an enterprise pace and people are thus very grateful for a stable, gradually evolving project um, because they just can't cope with the idea of breaking changes being inflicted on a regular basis. 
so yeah it's all about evolution rather than revolution so you've got poi the question then becomes what can you do with it well you can read and you can write and you can do this with pretty much all the microsoft office file formats so the most popular one to work with is excel because spreadsheets pretty much stick the world together certainly in in some sectors and finance in particular microsoft there's there was once a question asked um of why access isn't necessarily the world's greatest database and the ugly truth is that microsoft did a fair old bit of research in the 90s and came to the conclusion that the most popular database in the world isn't access no no 95 percent of civilians use excel as their database and if they're really exotic they might have three or four sheets in their database that they're working on with excel so you know the way most people work with data is ad hoc it's probably a spreadsheet and another sort of ugly little truth is they, they probably get away with it for an awful lot of small applications excel is powerful enough that you know as a civilian you can probably do what you need to in an awful lot of cases so anyway with poi you can read and write the various formats uh, Word document support is very much in there as well, and there's also support for Publisher, remember that. The MSG files that um, is, are used by Outlook and for exporting an individual email, and the Office drawing format, and various other odds and ends, a sort of long tail of things that are in there, but are perhaps less popular or less useful. Now, the read side of POI is particularly popular and interesting for search and indexing applications. Apache Tika, which is a related project, makes extensive use of POI to extract data and metadata from Office documents. And the APIs are all there to sort of get down to the, the raw information and separate it from the kind of formatting metadata that goes with it. And of course, the right side is perfect for applications that need to generate or export formats that users will almost certainly be familiar with. You know, you may or may not like Microsoft, you may or may not like their formats, but you can't deny that if you need to send a document to your mother, um, assuming that you uh, can email it to her, then she'll almost certainly be able to open a Word document, maybe not quite a few other things. So this is an example of what I do with uh, with Poi in my day job. So based on anecdotes and sampling on Stack Overflow, spreadsheets are the most popular thing people do with Poi. We've produced this one, and this is all generated using Poi code. And you've got examples of a few things here. So you've got uh, pretty formatting and fonts. You've got drop downs with choices in them, a number of differently named sheets. Uh, different regions, you can't really see this here, but different regions of this workbook are locked so they're not user editable. So the user can only sort of type in that bank of cells in colony e where you're obviously supposed to type the data. All of that is stuff you can figure out with Poi in an afternoon. There's a pretty rich API for doing almost anything you can do through the Excel user interface. And then we use Poi to read the spreadsheet back in later once the user has edited it and turn that data into structured systems. I would say POI is so good at what it does that you kind of want it whether you're working in a Java project or not. I've certainly worked on Python projects where I've set up a grim but serviceable interface where Python spawns a Java process to do some spreadsheet manipulation and then read it back. So, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of systems written in multiple programming languages, but I would say if you're wanting to do serious business with Office documents, POI is so good compared to anything else out there that it's worth having a Java module in your project just to do this bit because you'll struggle to find, or I've struggled to find anything in Python, for example, that's got the sort of richness of capability. You can certainly find Python libraries that scrape a bit of data out of a spreadsheet, but generating the kind of rich thing that I just showed there, you just haven't got the APIs for it anywhere that I've come across. Um, 
Yeah, in fact, it, uh, to elaborate on that point, I have a team who uh, work for me and who use Microsoft's own APIs for working directly with the Office document formats. And I'm always surprised whenever one of them shows me their attempts to work with a spreadsheet over here or a Word document over there, at just how low level and grim the sort of .NET APIs for working with the Office file formats are. They're very close to the raw file, certainly in the modern ones. The answer, of course, is that Microsoft want you to program Office itself. So if you're sat inside one of the Office programs as an add-in, or even if you're just using good old Visual Basic macros, uh, you've got a much nicer and richer interface. But this is of very little use to you if you're trying to write a headless server-side application that produces or consumes spreadsheets, for example. Um, there are a handful of desperate people in the world who have some quite serious forum threads about, well, if you run Word on the server and you sort of exec it and you put a, a semaphore around it to stop multiple processes using it once, you can, yeah. not very nice. POI is what you want, almost certainly, if you're doing any of this kind of stuff in a headless server-side application. Um, this was a bit of Twitter based banter from 2017 in Miami, where uh, I was giving a talk on the sort of the challenges and rewards of working with a uh, what was then a 17 year old Java code base contributed to by lots of different people. Serious point about those who came before me on the project reverse engineering the original Microsoft Office formats was a hard problem. They were and they are a proprietary format, and for historical reasons, a .doc file or a .xls file is little more than a binary dump of the C data structures that Word or Excel would have had in memory for that document. So unpicking that is the sort of thing that I'm not afraid to admit is beyond the skill level of me. And I suspect most people of my generation, uh, sort of with a computer science education, just didn't have to wrestle with this kind of horror for the most part, and I'm glad. On the other hand, if you want to pick into the new Microsoft Office formats, here's a little example from earlier on, just sitting at the terminal on my laptop here. Um, we've got an XLSX file. You can't see where I'm pointing. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, but anyway, our XLSX file, um, it turns out that the modern Office formats are just zip files. So you can manipulate them with standard zip tools. And inside the zip, what you find is just a bunch of XML files, or nearly all a bunch of XML files. You can see the odd binary thing there, like the uh, Visual Basic macros that we'll talk about later. But reverse engineering these formats is rather easier um, because you can you can open the XML, you can pretty print it, and it's not very human readable, but it's a lot more human readable than just lumps of binary that you have to pick through in a hex editor. There are some tricky details to these formats, things like shared strings, but overall, um, it's not too bad to work with. Of course, the other thing about the new formats is uh, Microsoft's controversial but ultimately successful attempt to get them adopted as standards. They are now ECMA and ISO standards, which means uh, all you have to do is download these various documents from the website, read through 5,000 pages or so of the spec, and you can read exactly how uh, Excel or Word encodes information into these formats and how your application can too. Um, of course, you don't actually have to read all 5,000 pages, but you the fact that there is a public and official spec for all of this, again, it's another world. The challenges for me in adding more support to POI for uh, features of the modern formats is just it's not on the same level of difficulty, I would say, as what those who came before me had to go through with the originals in the early 2000s. More on the state of the standard later, but the fact that it's there at all helps. So, um, oops, I don't know what that link's doing there again. Versions of Java, though, let's talk about that. It might surprise you to learn that POI only requires Java 8 as its minimum version. Um, even that only happened relatively recently. We were Java, I think, 1.6 or 1.7 for a long time. So you won't yet find a lot of lambdas being used in the POI code base. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of POI users are big corporates and they move at a big corporate pace. And we don't want to screw them over. You know, some of them do contribute back. 
they do ask intelligent questions. Certainly the company I work for just isn't yet in a position to force all of our customers onto Java 11 or whatever the, I think 18 is the next LTS version. But you think about the pace at which Red Hat evolves and customers like a sort of eight year cycle for things. We just have to take it slowly and we appreciate the sort of enterprise pace of these decisions. But I think having got to Java 8, speaking with my committers hat on, will help sort of the flow of patches and the ability to work on it. Um, so quick look around the module layout. I'm just showing the, um, the pages from the GitHub mirror here, but the way POI is split up into modules very much just mirrors the, um, the format. So on the left of this image, you've got the sort of top level packages in the um, top level packages in original POI. And then on the right, you've got the top level packages in the OOXML module, which is the one that adds support for all of the modern formats. So subdivided by format, Excel, Word, and so on. These various acronyms here stand for things like horrible spreadsheet formats um, and dreadful drawing formats, which was sort of a homage to uh, Microsoft's rather unpleasant binary formats from the 90s. Whereas on the other side, you've got XSSF for XML spreadsheet formats and so on and so forth. So again, we subdivide by old and new, we subdivide by the different file formats. The other thing is we have tried to extract common interfaces wherever possible. We try and give you a common API between the old and the new. So for example, this SS package you can see on the left is the set of interfaces that apply to as much as possible from both the old and the new spreadsheet format. Um, in my experience, there are some sort of unpleasant details like how to do borders, which we haven't managed yet to make common across the old and the new, but you can get an awful lot done using the interfaces that don't specify whether you're working with XML or the older formats. And so the advice whenever writing code against POI is try and stick to the common interfaces as much as possible. It just makes life a little bit easier, even if you don't think you'll ever have reason to work with the older formats or perhaps with the newer formats, given given the state of your enterprise. It just makes more sense to try and stick with the generic stuff where you can. So then the question is, well, this sounds good. Where can I get it from? Um, like most open source projects, Java projects, it is, of course, available on Maven Central. So you can use Maven, Gradle, Ivy, or whatever your other favorite Java build tool is. You put a couple of entries in that you can copy and paste from Maven Central. It downloads, and you're off to the races. There is, of course, an option on the POI website to download the jars, which remains quite a popular choice. See previous remarks about big enterprises. Deep in some enterprises somewhere, I suspect people are still checking a directory full of jars into subversion as the dependency management for their project. I can't be too judgmental about that because it's not that many years since we phased that out in my organization. But anyway, downloading the jars is one thing. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion sometimes over which ones you need, but you can see here the two important projects. You depend on POI if you just want the um, old Office formats, depend on POI OOXML if you want the new Office formats. The only reason for having them separate really is that the new formats do bring with them a fairly large number of megabytes that you're adding to your project and to your ultimate distribution for various reasons, supporting the XML, requires us to ship the schemas and a bunch of code derived from those schemas, both of which are sort of tens of megabytes. Certainly being a, a PMC member on POI, the, the moment it sort of felt a little bit scary and real is when they authorize your PGP key and they say, there you go, when you do releases, you can upload stuff to Maven Central and it'll just appear. Um, little tip, little aside, if your PGP key is on a hardware device like that one, you're probably going to break a lot of assumptions that somebody wrote into a script somewhere for signing and uploading jar files during this release process. But of course, the joy of open source is you can then fix those scripts. So the uh, the release cycle for POI is um, fairly gentle, again, to fit with the fairly sort of uh, enterprise pace of, of the users. So we tend to do a couple of beta releases 
before we do a final release for any given number. That gives plenty of time for people to try it out, see if there have been any regressions, feed that back to us and ensure a nice smooth upgrade cycle. The beta releases go on Maven Central in much the same way. They're clearly labeled and tagged. So it's a nice way to just iterate gently and avoid any surprises. Quick mention for one of the sub projects. So in order to support those XML based new office formats, uh, what we use is something called XML beans, which is a tool where you point it at all the schemas, the XML schemas describing the modern office formats. It compiles those schemas into a bunch of Java classes that allow you to read in some XML and have a low level API for what it looks like based on what the schema says it should look like. So this is quite powerful and this is how we got our office support off the ground. Um, however, for various reasons, nothing else is making serious use of XML beans or at least not wanting to maintain it. So we've bought it in house as a sub project to POI just so we can make sure that it's dependencies are up to date, security fixes go in, and that it's it's maintained enough for us to safely depend on it. So yeah, the approach we chose for the, the modern office formats was you start with the XML beans schema derived Java model, and then we build a nice interface on top of that. But the nice thing about this is if you're missing some methods in the sort of top level interface for working with an XLSX file, you can usually fish down to the XML and work things out at that level, and then you can build the new interface on top. So it's often quite a handy workaround if we haven't done the high level interfaces for your bit yet. So POI isn't perfect, although it's pretty damn good. So a few areas that I'd like to see improvement if I ever get back on the tools, or perhaps I might be able to get some of my team to help contribute to these. Um, Copying stuff around in a spreadsheet, I've always found is one of those things that POI doesn't give you much help with. If you want to copy this entire sheet from here to here, you're kind of on your own doing that the painful way with a lot of code. That kind of reflects the rather interconnected nature of the format. Copying things, doing a deep copy of things needs quite a lot of code. Um, there's not a great deal we can do about that, but perhaps somebody could contribute their deep copying back. I'm looking at myself, I suppose, when I say that. Um, what else? The code, like any big and old code base, the code can sometimes be a bit tricky to navigate. There is a mixture of styles, but there's a pretty solid set of tests to keep you on the straight and narrow. Patches are very welcome with constructive feedback. If you are an active PMC member and committer, there's some fairly generous deals that Microsoft will do for active ASF committers. So if you need to get hold of a copy of Office, they will do that for free if they see that you are a genuine and consistent contributor. I appreciated that back in the day for sort of working on it on personal stuff when I wasn't uh, on work laptops. And we're always happy to take patches with um, a bit of constructive feedback on them, especially if the patch includes a test. There are a few fun occasions where Office doesn't follow what the standard says it should do. So this is possibly my favorite all time bug from POI. You can see at the top left here, this is a comment in a spreadsheet. So we've just written five lines of POI to stick a comment on this cell. It's one of the slightly awkward low level things because you don't have a lot of help when it comes to making that comment the right size. You might think Excel just makes it the right size. It doesn't. However, if you look at the bottom right here, you can see what actually happened to us when we started sticking comments into things rather than being the obvious sort of uh, yellow square our comments were coming out as a big curvy arrow and you sort of look at the code and go i've called a method called create comment i've attached it to a cell i don't understand how this can be um i dug into it and discovered that this is one of those classic cases where excel is doing something the standard doesn't say it should be uh, there's an id in some xml an id is supposed to be an opaque identifier for tying something to something else but it turns out the actual value of that id is the difference between excel behaving properly and turning all your comments into curvy arrows so there you go we changed poi to uh, use the id that was expected and all of a sudden things started working 
the everyday reality of using poi is you're using it because your users want stuff that works in office so sometimes you just have to get your pragmatic hat on and make things bug compatible with how office behaves let's talk about dom so the XML format support in POI is based on XML beans, which of course is uh, based on reading all of the XML from your file into an object model in memory. So this is ultimately backed by DOM, which is the Java object model or the whatever language you're in. The object model way of reading a lump of XML, you have an object for every element and you can walk over the tree. Anyone who's ever worked with XML will tell you that dom is really quite memory hungry if you've got a five megabyte xml document on disk you might need three times as much memory or more to read that into dom by the time you add xml beans on top you get quite a lot of inflation from your excel or word file on disk to what you need in memory with poi uh, you need to especially watch out for the fact that as i mentioned earlier office documents are zip files so they're compressed so if you have a one megabyte excel file that's one megabyte compressed so there's already quite a lot of xml in there that's been collapsed down um so you need to unzip it and then multiply that figure by perhaps five to get the amount of ram you're going to need um all due credit to microsoft whatever the actual office programs do it's not read the whole thing into dom because they cope really quite well with big documents um we have found with poi that there comes a point where you just can't if you're trying to insert lots of information perhaps a million rows into a spreadsheet you can't really do that the dom based way and you can't really read that the dom based way however uh poi does have support for so the answer to this in the xml world is to process things in a streaming fashion uh, where you just sort of get an event fired at your code for every element that goes past. Poi's got that. It's a bit lower level, of course, but it is there. And I contributed a couple of patches back in the day so that you can do a hybrid model where if you know one sheet in particular and your workbook is big, you can process all the others using DOM and then flip over to streaming mode just for that one. And that works quite well. Of course, there comes a point when you have to ask your users, do you really want to do this in Excel? Um, sometimes the answer is yes. Other times we have been able to persuade people over to a straightforward CSV file, which is just easier to work with if you're shuffling large amounts of data around. Standards aren't perfect. So if you remember that 15, what did I say, 5,000 page document I mentioned earlier, uh, you'll be shocked to hear that within those 5,000 pages, there are contradictions. And you'll be even more shocked to hear that sometimes office behaves in a manner that doesn't quite line up with what the standard says uh, occasionally as i say we have to be pragmatic and be bug compatible with office one of the reasons for the odd gray hair here was trying to unravel the behavior of excel when rounding numbers with a very large number of decimal places um, there's a lot of history and a lot of awkwardness in how Excel does maths because, of course, at the end of the day, it's running on a computer. You can't do perfect and complete continuous maths using a computer that works in binary. And the way Excel tries to hide that from people has evolved over the years. But of course, Microsoft are in a corner now. They can't change how spreadsheets work, even if you do them differently on a modern CPU. You can't. There's just far too much out there that's reliant on and encoded to work around how it works. What we tried to get a straight answer out of Microsoft on was how Excel handles the rounding of numbers with loads and loads of decimal places underneath. I never managed to get through to the right team at Microsoft to ask the question. So in the end, we just about managed to cope or just limit our users to not putting in things that accurate. The tricky bit is you often get them as results of a calculation. They're in the file format, but Excel rounds them and you don't see it. Macros. This is a little alteration we contributed to POI back in the day. So macros are just a lump of binary. It's still proprietary to Microsoft. It wasn't part of the standard. So the Visual Basic macros are compiled by whatever Office application you write them in. However, you can still do a little bit of work with POI. So for example, here we're showing this with Excel. What we're doing is just copying all of the macros out of one workbook and into another. Um, so 
pretty basic. However, it does at least mean that you can include macros in files you're giving out to your users. And one tip is that you can run macros when the workbook opens subject to the user clicking okay i'd like to enable macros so if you want sort of workbook specific behavior you can write a generic macro driven by the data in your workbook and as soon as the user enables macros some behavior can happen at that point so that's quite a nice alternative route if your users can cope with the macros it's quite a nice alternative route to do some changes from within office itself if it's messy or expensive or fiddly to achieve those from poi beforehand so then comes the question where is poi going next so i just mentioned we've done the 5.0 or poi has done the 5.0 release i can't take much credit for it personally start of this year included the full support for the java 9 module system for what that's worth so I haven't really got to grips with it yet because of aforementioned limits on how rapidly we can move, but it's all there if you need it. Um, it's still a very active community. There's a lot going on on Stack Overflow. I say my my reason for saying that the Excel stuff is what Poi is used by for most people is just a basic unscientific sample on Stack Overflow. About two thirds of the questions seem to be to do with spreadsheets. It's very widely used by a lot of different people and a lot of organizations. And I think it will remain that way. There's still an active set of contributors, some new names, obviously, compared to when I was really involved a few years back, but that's great. People come and people go. Um, the project continues to evolve. There's a healthy number of commits going on and the evolution continues. I think um, really it's all about stabilization and maturity now, about having more helper methods to work with things. Uh, one thing I'd love to contribute back if I can find the time to disentangle it from our code base, I would imagine nearly everybody else has written something like this as well. Uh, if you're trying to work with spreadsheets through POI, you don't get much help when it comes to doing styling and fonts. So naively, you might just generate a different style for every cell you want it to look different, but there's a hard limit on the number of styles you can have in a workbook before Excel gets upset. So you have to reuse them if you're doing the same formatting in multiple places. So I suspect everyone who's ever done this ends up writing a little helper class to keep track of styles and how you might reuse them. I'd love to contribute all that back into Poi, although perhaps somebody already has by now. But that's that's one of those things that I just think people out there who are sitting on these utility layers, it would be really nice to see those make it back into the project just to make it even more mature and useful. Basically anything, things like that are what people ask the questions about on Stack Overflow. If the answer could just be, look, there's this utility thing over there, I think that would be really cool and a nice way to just sort of stabilize and consolidate. So that's a bit of a tour of POI. Um, those are my various means of being reached and I will gladly take questions with the time we have left. Thank you very much for listening.